Hello everyone and welcome back to another online service from Woodhill Evangelical Church. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. We really do appreciate it. As always, there are materials that you can use on the website. There are worship songs that the worship band has chosen for this week. There's the kids spot for the children and there is no YF TV this week, but we do have our YF Zoom call tonight at seven. So if you're of YF age, then feel free to join in on that. Just one announcement from me, if you've been receiving the emails, then you'll already know that the church is starting to slowly reopen. So now we have a weekly prayer meeting happening on a Wednesday night, which does mean, unfortunately, the church is no longer open on a Tuesday for individual prayer. But it is still exciting that we're able to get back to a wee bit of normality um, during all this crazy times. Also um, on that, we do need a few more volunteers. Thank you to everyone who's already volunteered, but it would be great to have a few more. So if you're capable to be able to come down and volunteer on the Wednesday prayer meetings, then that would be very much appreciated. Today, Stephen McCauley will be giving us a sermon on faith and focus and he will be reading from Psalm 23. He is unfortunately shielding at the minute, so he is bringing us his sermon from his home, but I'm sure we'll enjoy it nonetheless. But before that, however, George Martin is gonna come up and give us an elders update, so I'm gonna hand over to George. Thanks, Sarah, and it's good to be with you this morning. We're pleased to bring a further update this week as we seek God's guidance for a new pastor for Woodhill Evangelical Church. I can tell you today that we are continuing in discussions with David Gooding, who is currently a pastor at Stirling Baptist Church. You'll have the chance to hear David when he preaches in our online service on Sunday the 16th of August. As we're all aware, the current COVID constraints make the normal process of meeting and greeting a pastoral candidate more complicated than normal. We're working through this process with David's full cooperation and we'll update you as matters progress. In the meantime, keep an eye on your email inbox in the days leading up to the 16th when a short video introducing David will be sent to the church. These are both challenging and exciting times for Woodhill and we encourage you to pray for David, for his wife Susie, their young family of three children and for the Woodhill leadership team as we look forward to seeking the guidance of God. We also want to thank our family service and online service team for all the work they've been doing and continue to do in planning and putting these services together. Thanks also to our COVID team who continue to meet on a regular basis, putting together plans for a return to our church building, which certainly, as I'm sure you appreciate, is not an easy task. In relation to this, you should receive a short survey on return to church by email later today. We would encourage you to complete and return the survey as soon as possible, and certainly within the next few days to help us progress with future plans. And so, as Sarah has already encouraged us, let's take the opportunity to meet to pray, yes, indeed, with social distancing, as that continues on Wednesday evenings from 7 till 8. There certainly is much for us to pray for just now and in the coming weeks. Our continuing dialogue with David as our pastoral candidate, please be in prayer about that, about return to church and all that means, church ministries, life groups, follow up of course on the kids club, the I Spy club that has been taking place over the last week, how to reach out into our community in these days and also the pastoral needs that exist on an ongoing basis. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for your love and care, for your grace and the gift of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We also thank you that we are part of the body of Christ, the church. We pray for David, for Susie and their family at this time. We pray that you would bless them and guide them and lead them in your will. We also pray for ourselves as a church that you would lead us, that you would guide us, that you would empower us, and that you would encourage us in the current circumstances. We pray for our COVID team as they seek to guide us on our return to church. We pray for our church ministries and for life groups as we look to the months ahead and we pray for the opportunity that soon we will be able to gather again. 
Our Father, we pray for the work that has been done through the I Spy Club online in this past week. We thank you for everyone who's been involved, for all the boys and girls and parents and members of their family and friends who have been reached and touched. And we pray that you would really would reach into hearts and lives with the message of the gospel and the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for our community in these days with all the needs that exist. We pray that somehow you would help us to see and take the opportunity to reach out into our community. Also within our own fellowship, we pray especially for those who are ill at this time, for those with long-term illnesses, for others who have been grieved in recent times, who have been bereaved. And we also pray for all who are anxious and who are especially concerned at this time of COVID and all that means. Our Father, we need your strength and help as a church be with us, guide us, protect us. And we do pray that you would bless Stephen as he would share your word with us today. We bring these our prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory. Amen. Good morning. Very nice to be able to see, see you all, but we live in unusual times and, and things are a little different from the way they used to be. For me, it's also been a little strange. I'm in that group of people who are classed as shielding. And so since March, I have had restrictions upon me. I haven't set foot in a shop. That is very good. But I've also had restrictions on how often I could go out and when I could go out. And it's only recently that I've been able to get outdoors and spend time either walking or recently doing some outdoor activities with the family, which has been, it's been great. But restrictions make you think of what you're missing and what you're not seeing. You know, I have looked at things a little differently. I have viewed things a little differently. I have seen things a little differently over a period of time. And I haven't had the experience that so many of you have had of going to shops, of wearing a mask, of, of queuing ups, because there's only so many people around in that time. I've seen these barriers up in places. I've not had that. I have been at home. I have been restricted and most of my time I've been indoors. But I have noticed something. And I've, when I'm looking outside, I've noticed that the air, the sky seems clearer. You know, I think the air is actually cleaner because there are, until recently, certainly a few cars and buses and trucks and things. So, especially during that good weather, it seemed that everything was just that little bit clearer. The colours were clearer and crisper. And that is because there was less going on to actually disturb it. You know, it's been nice to feel fresh air. And if you've not had that situation of being restricted, um, as somebody who's, who's been unable to even go out for a period of time, then you, you miss it. And it's nice to see something and feel something fresh. You know, how do we, we, we look at something sometimes? It is through our eyes. And our eyes are, how do you put it, an, an organ of physical sight. So in other words, we use it to see, which we all understand. But it's also an organ physical sight, but we also have spiritual sight. And that's what sometimes we would like to look at a bit afresh. So what we're going to do now is read for the first time the Psalm 23. We're going to read it in the King James Bible version because it's poetic, it's the way many of us know it. And uh, it, it fits in very nicely. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He may give me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Looking at something fresh, through fresh eyes, looking at it carefully. Many years ago, I bought my first car. 
I went home from work one day and said, I've been to see this gentleman, I've seen a car and I really quite like it, and I'm going to go and, and buy it. And they said, right, okay, what is it? I told them what it was. And I told them, is this perfect for me? And it's a lovely dark green colour. So I said, well, that's, that's nice too. Are you going to get it tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to straight from work. I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to go to work. Ah, straight from work. So that's exactly what I did. I went to work the following day. I went to the bank and in those days, no cash machines. You had to physically go in and sign away your life and prize your hard-earned cash from the bank manager's hand and convince them that you were using it for uh, something sensible and no frivolous activities. So I took out my £120 and kept it in my pocket. I went after work and went up to this house and walked down the drive and nice trees, leading drive and saw the car and I thought, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Spoke to the gentleman and checked everything out again, turned the engine on at work, went back and forth to wait you do, made all the right vroom vroom noises and I was quite happy. So I handed over my hard earned £120. I got the little piece of paper that said, that's my car, that's my independence. So I drove home as my boy would do at the time. I took a slight detour to go home. Now, I don't think I went too far, but you know, I had a wee bit of testing in my car. I drove up the drive and opened the door, got out. I'm not sure who was the first person to see it, but someone turned and said, it's brown. Well, I closed the door and got out of the car and I couldn't dispute it, it was brown. Now, down a tree covered drive and slightly dark at night, too. It was a nice shade of green to me at the time, but I couldn't dispute it. The car was brown. Unfortunately, it wasn't all brown outside, it was brown inside, and it was brown underneath, which unfortunately manifested itself in rust, which meant that within a very short space of time, this nice brown car started to dissolve before my eyes. So it didn't last quite as long as it could have. I'd only seen what I wanted to see. I'd only seen a car that I wanted that suited me and I thought was really good. And to give them, you know, give them a due, in the 1970s, that's the late 1970s, a brown MG, it was quite a cool car. But your eyes can deceive you, can they? I only saw what I wanted to see. I, I didn't actually look properly. So I didn't actually see the horrors from beneath. I only saw this fabulous brown MG. You know, sometimes though, we can look at something intently, something stops in our tracks, or we look at something very fresh. And we've been fortunate as a church family, we've been blessed with a number of babies recently, and hopefully more to come. And we've got some new grandparents, and we have Corn and June, Mark and Elaine, and we have great grandparents in Raymond and Grace. But I'm sure it will be actual parents that look at that little baby differently. I can imagine James and Kirsten looking at little Woody so intently in a way that they have never actually looked at another baby. Kirsten because she's her son. James because of the wonder of having a son. And they'll be looking at him and thinking, he is just perfect. They'll be viewing all the little different parts. They'll be thinking his ears, his eyes, his nose, his fingers, his toes. They're looking intently into his eyes, looking for any kind of recognition coming back from this little baby boy. And they'll be staring to wait for that first recognition smile to say, that's my mum and dad. You know, there's a modern parable which I quite like. And it says, the eyes are a window to our soul. I'm not actually sure who wrote it, but it's quite good. But one that is even better is in Matthew 22, verse 6. And I quite like the New Living Translation version of it. Matthew 22, verse 6. Your eye is a lamp into your body. A pure eye is sunshine into your soul. You know, we just read Psalm 23. And we know it so well because we sing it, we, we hear it, and we know it all by heart so many else. But do we really see it? Do we, do we gloss over it or do we really look intently? And sometimes we don't really see things. Sometimes people don't really see us too, really. They think they do, but they don't really see the real person. I grew up the youngest of three brothers. I'm still the youngest, and I still have three brothers, and I'm still growing up. But I, I was known as Graham and Alan's little brother. 
and then it became the root cause, son. And as time progressed, I became Jennifer's boyfriend. I progressed from Jennifer's boyfriend to Jennifer's fiance, and then I was fortunate to be able to become myself Jennifer's husband. Now I'm just Jennifer's other half. But you know, things progress. I became Alistair's dad, Katie's dad, you know, Lindsay's father-in-law. You know, I'm a, a cousin, an uncle, a friend, a work colleague to lots of different people. And now I am also Harry and Archie's grandpa. You know, the progression isn't it. People, people see you and put labels on you differently. I was once in a hospital ward and I was the one that other visitors could walk past and say, well, at least we're not visiting somebody that's as bad as him. Because they only saw the tubes and all the various different things that were coming out of the time. So, but something that is a great example of, of not really seeing things properly in the way perhaps we should is the Book of Ruth. You know, and, and we're reading the Book of Ruth, the story of, of Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi. Naomi had lost her husband and her two sons, and she was left with just her daughter's law. And she gave him the choice to stay, but Ruth decided to go with her mum when she said she was going to return to her home in Bethlehem. Now, there's a fabulous section of Ruth, and it's worth reading. We studied it not that long ago, and it's worth revisiting it. And Ruth chapter 1 and 16, that's a, that's a really good bit, 16 and 17. It's where, they, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people were my people, but your God will be my God. So Ruth made the decision to stay with her mother-in-law and go back to Bethlehem, go to Israel. Now that was actually quite a big deal for various different reasons, because Ruth was a Moabite. She was known as Ruth the Moabitess, or just the Moabitess, the daughter-in-law of Naomi. Moab and Israel had been at long heads over many years, going back a long time. There had been a lot of real animosity between them, and Moab had treated Israel very badly and very poorly during the time of the judges, and it was something which the Israelites kept their time and kept their space from Moab. So to be known as a Moabitess, it was a very much a, a label, wasn't it? But over time, Ruth gained favour, and this Moabitess gained favour with the man Boaz. And Ruth became Boaz's wife. So she went from being the Moabitess, who was the daughter-in-law of Naomi, to being Boaz's wife. But she's also known as the great grandmother of David, who wrote this psalm. You know, God can see the whole picture. We only see the little bit. We don't get a bit closest to us. We don't actually see the whole thing. You know, we have no idea of our plans, but we know we can trust. So do we take our sight for granted? You know, I see that nice by I started for the kids. It's really great. And I'm really very flattered that they've all been given glasses a bit like money. I don't know if you, you saw them, but take a look. And it's, it's really very good. I'm quite disappointed I'm a bit late to the party, so I, I can't actually join. You know, for some reason, instead of too old, and I feel quite hard to that. But I've got the glasses, so if there's an opening, I'm in. But we can sometimes learn from children, can't we? We can simplify things a little bit. There's a parable, um, a bit like it's the children's parable, if you like, but it applies to everybody. And it's Proverbs 20, verse 12. And it is, ears to hear, eyes to see. Both are good from God. Good doings are gifts. You know, do we take care of what we see as a physical sign? Do we take care of what we read? How long we spend in prayer, what we study in our spiritual insight? Now, sight is mentioned a number of times in the Bible, and it's, it's used as examples, but also Jesus restores sight on a number of occasions. And one of the ones I don't like is found in Matthew 9. It's the story of the two men, the two men falling. And they both shouted at the same thing, Son of God, David, have mercy on us, when they heard Jesus was passing. The crowd tried to quiet them, but Jesus turned around and asked them a question. 
He said, do you believe that I am able to do this? And the boat said, yes, Lord. And then he touched their eyes. And he didn't just say, see. What he said, because of your faith, it will happen. Or some versions is, your faith has saved you. Now, the meaning of faith is fabulous in this context from being these two blind men. And we can read that in Hebrews 11, verse 1. The meaning of, of, of faith fits in very well with that story of Jesus healing the two blind men. Because what were the blind men thinking? And how did it turn out for them? So Hebrews 11, verse 1, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence we cannot yet see. Now, the blind men were confident that Jesus could heal them. They would have heard what had been happening, the miracles that were going on, and they knew that Jesus could see heal them. But they didn't have the evidence of that, but they couldn't see. But when Jesus touched them, they had the evidence. You see, Jesus can see us as we are, and he can heal us as we are, and he knows what we need. John 10 is a great passage, and there's lots of it, isn't it? You know, the shepherd to his sheep hear his voice. He calls his sheep by name and he leads them. He gathers his flock and they follow him. All references to the shepherd looking after his feet and looking after his sheep and caring for his sheep. You know, that's where it's said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep by name. You know, a good shepherd knows his flock, but Jesus is the great shepherd. Not only knows us, but he knows his future plans for us. Let's go back. Let's read Psalm 23 with fresh eyes. And this time, just think of the psalm in a different way. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. That's relationship. I shall not want. That's supply. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's rest. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's refreshment. He restored my soul. That's healing. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. That's guidance. For his name's sake, that's purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's testing. I will fear no evil, that's protection. For thou art with me, that's faithfulness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, that's discipline. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies, that's hope. Thou anointest my head with oil, that's consecration. My cup runneth over, that's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, that's blessing. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, that's security forever, that's eternity. It's time to open our eyes and look and see what Jesus has prepared for us. And when we look into scripture, when we look into the books, and we look into Psalms, and sometimes maybe look a little fresh, as we have been doing over the last number of months, and each day as the Psalm has come through, there's been something just to encourage us with. It's nice to look at them afresh. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you that you are the great shepherd the one who knows each one of us by name, the one who calls us and we follow. And we pray that you will indeed show us how we can follow you at this time, where things seem difficult and where the opportunities seem so slim because of the restrictions. Lord, that you will show us the path. For although we are going through this time, we know exactly where our future will be. But we thank you that you see us, you see each one of us, and that you see exactly what future you have for us. Lord, we thank you, and we pray you will bless each one of us as we head into 
a fresh day. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. That was great. And thank you so much to everyone who's tuned in this week. Take care, and we can't wait to see you again next week. <laughs>